Hello, and welcome to the High on InfoSec podcast. Uh, this is a relatively new cast, and usually I have other people on it with me. Today, I'm going to be uh, covering a uh, recent development in the news. Uh, a couple of people have been talking about it online for a few days. Uh, and generally, this is the vulnerability that if you are a systems administrator or part of a security team, you need to be aware of and you need to patch immediately. Because if you do not patch this, you're going to have a very bad day. If you remember a few years ago, uh, a very long time ago now, in 2003, there was a similar wormable exploit involving RPC called Sandworm that decimated systems. This is the same kind of exploit, uh, and there are threat actors out there who are working very hard to make sure that it will be included in botnets and other uh, types of malware that they're using in their campaigns. In other words, if you don't patch now, you're going to have a bad day. In addition to patching, you need to take some steps on your firewall to make sure that it's not vulnerable. So without further ado, let's talk about this vulnerability. So this vulnerability is, uh, it's actually three separate CVEs. All of them affect the same two services. Those two services are the uh, Windows Common Log File System. The Windows Common Log File System generally is uh, something that is used in Windows. And uh, it, it's a way that Windows can write the logs from various applications to disk by first putting it in a buffer. That buffer seems to have some issues that are vulnerable to exploitation and an overflow. Um, so if you are kind of like a systems administrator and you, you look at your patch Tuesday notes, it's kind of not so apparent what the, the issue is. But if you look under the hood, both RPC and this CFLS have issues that need to be patched right away. The first issue is essentially um, this buffer overflow here. The second one uh, is not as much of an issue. So we're going to start out with uh, CVE 20222425211. We don't have a cool name for it yet. Um, I've seen people recommend uh, RPC. -a. I think that'd be a cool name to call it. But in general, this one scores a 7.8 out of 10 on the CVSS score. Uh, that's pretty high, but it's not as high as a 9.8. Uh, which is another one we have today. This one, uh, according to Microsoft, is already being actively exploited. Uh, people who run botnet, not botnets, people who run honeypots are seeing it out in the wild. And uh, there are attempts of, at exploitation already. Uh, this is the kind of vulnerability that once it gets into a network, worms its way to all the other computers in the network. Um, it's wormable. Uh, more than that, uh, the other vulner two vulnerabilities that were mentioned in this week's uh, patch notes, we have uh, one called involving a privilege escalation exploit in the CLFS driver. This one has the same vulnerability score of 7.8, but according to Microsoft's exploitability index, it's more likely this one's going to be used by threat actors to take advantage of and push exploits into networks. Uh, so essentially, once they get the foothold, whether it be through business email compromise, uh, through an open RDP port, through uh, pure stupidity or just a user downloading and running something they shouldn't. Once they're in there, this kind of vulnerability that lets them spread rapidly throughout the network. So it's imperative that if you have some kind of patch management program, say you're using uh, what used to be called SMS, SCCM, and is now called Endpoint Manager, or if you're using any third-party patch management, you push these patches out right away. It may break some stuff, just like the print nightmare did, but it's safe. better to be safe than sorry, and it's better to ask... Uh, better to ask for forgiveness than permission where this is concerned because if somebody gets in your network and compromises all the machines, lots of people on your team are going to get fired. So it's better to maybe have some computers that might break because you didn't go through the whole process of doing patch management properly where you, you roll it out to a test group and then you fr go from that test group to another group and you make sure it's not going to break things. This is the kind of vulnerability where you need to kind of be like, hey, that's a great process normally, but yeah, we're going to break stuff if we have to, because it's more important at this point to make sure that people do not uh, get infected with these. Uh, they're not malicious software yet, but I mean, like, people don't get exploited because this is a bad one. Hey, Dickie, nice to see you. Um, next, we have this uh, CVE 2022-268809. Uh, 
I, this 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 one I think I just spoke about. I looked at the wrong one off the top of my head, but this is really concerning. People are already building patches, uh, reverse engineering the patch to uh, to work on and uh, essentially build their own exploit for this. There's GitHub pages I've seen where people have done some really good work reverse engineering the patch already. Uh, they're doing diffs and they're they're seeing what's been changed and they are building exploits based on that. Uh, your best mitigations right now, if you are in an enterprise network, are to block a uh, few ports on the firewall. These ports generally are going to be uh, ports you should already be blocking, but you might not be. Port 445 is the big one. This not only affects this vulnerability, but a ton of other ones. This is usually used for SMB, server message block, the way that Windows shares files through computers. But it also affects uh, several other services like RPC that can run on that as well, as well as PS exec, things like this. Close the port on the firewall. There's no reason for it to be open inbound or outbound. Most people will block it only outbound. You also need to block it inbound. Um, I'm sorry, that was backwards. Uh, so essentially, we're going to block it. People from communicating on port 445 at all outside the network. There's no reason you need to do it. Just get rid of it. Uh, ports 139 and 137 are also affected. These are related to the RPC and the logging services. And also there's port 2106. This one's often overlooked. This is another way that RPC can hit the internet without even talking to your firewall first. This is um, essentially a multiplexing protocol that allows RPC to bypass your firewall's rules and get online when it wants to. You need to block it at the firewall. It's another way that threat actors can get in. Um, it affects, um, uh, let's see, it affects versions seven and up of Windows itself. It affects multiple Windows programs, including Exchange and Outlook and pretty much anything that's using Windows logging built in. You gotta block the ports. Uh, and I said 2106, it's also uh, port 2049 is another one it uses. Um, you want to apply the, the latest security updates if you can. Uh, that's the April 2020 security updates. Uh, if you have an endpoint agent like CrowdStrike or uh, the Palo Alto endpoint agent, you want to make sure it's running on as many of your customers or users' machines as possible. Uh, these vulnerabilities are uh, not good. So you want to make sure they're patched. And this has been an emergency broadcast, kind of, just to get the word out here. Normally, I go into a lot more depth. I talk to other people. But this is one I wanted to get out right away because this affects a lot of people. So this is all I got for you guys today. You guys take care. Make sure you're patched. Bye now.